Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is probably the most unflattering angle you'll ever get from me, but what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get on here. So today's video is going to be my vlog video for Asian Readathon because I said I would be doing a May TBR video, but I just don't have the energy. Like it is finals week. I literally just got my COVID shot, the second COVID shot like a few hours ago. So I'm like in bed and I don't want to move. And I'm feeling a little drowsy right now, but it could also be a combination of no sleep from finals period and the COVID shot. So crossing my fingers and nothing else happens. I'm drinking a ton of water because that's what everyone has been suggesting. But I just wanted to share with you, this is going to be my Asian readathon vlog. So I'll be vlogging me reading some amazing Asian books. I have a really great TBR. So this is what you're going to get instead of the May TBR video. But anyway, I just want to share my current read, which I'm probably just going to read a few pages of now. It is If I Tell You the Truth by Jasmine Carr. This book follows Kiran, who is a Punjabi Sikh woman. And she, in the beginning of the book, she, we find out that she has been sexually assaulted. And she decides to keep the baby against her family's orders. So she flees India, her home in India, to go to Canada to raise her child undocumented. And this actually follows both perspectives. So it follows Kieran and then it follows her daughter Sahara halfway through the book, which so freaking awesome. It's just awesome to have both perspectives. Um, and this book weaves through prose, poetry, and illustrations, so we get to have, like, different forms. I love when books change in form. It's just so refreshing and so brilliant, and the fact that she can pull off all, she can pull off writing prose and poetry, like, this book is amazing. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm about halfway through, and that's what I'm probably gonna be doing for the rest of the day, because I got my shot, like, I just am not feeling 100% me and it is also the cherry on top of the cake is that it's finals week now so I should be doing my finals right now but I just I like told my teachers I could not I'm not in like a great space right now in terms of like all the work that we had to do and then finals and then I got the COVID shot um but anyway I'm excited for a really great month of reading some AAPI books so yeah this is the one that I'm tackling for the Asian Readathon um created by with Cindy and I think this is the book for I'm reading this for the challenge read a book that takes place outside of the U.S. this takes place in Canada um so it's really interesting I don't think I've ever read an, I don't think I've ever read a book that takes place in Canada I'm not really sure. I can't really remember right now. I'm kind of out of it. But anyway, I will keep you updated on this book maybe throughout the day. I don't know. I'm probably going to read and take a nap and then like go outside because it's such a beautiful day. But at the same time, I just want to stay in bed all day. But anyways, I will update you as I read more. Hello, everyone. So I it is day two of the COVID vaccine that I got yesterday and it's been 24 hours and this morning and I, it's like 4 p.m now it's been more than 24 hours but i think for the first 24 hours it was pretty intense i was in bed and i could not get out and i had really bad headaches um and just like overall stomach cramps but i took some tylenol and it honestly just like magic um but now i'm drinking some tea because of my allergies because it's supposed to help me but i just wanted to mention that i finished if I tell you the truth, and I realize that I've been mispronouncing the author's name, which is Jasmine Kaur, like Apple Kaur, not Carr. So I apologize for that, but I finished If I Tell You the Truth by Jasmine Kaur, and I am just blown away, first of all. I don't really think this is a book that I can rate, because I do rate most of the books that I read, but I think for this book, I think with the seriousness of the topics and just how personal the story is, I think it would be, like, kind of wrong for me to, like, rate it to you guys, like, to put it up to like something as um superficial as like a five star rating so i'm not going to rate it but i'm going to talk about why i really enjoy this book so this book follows our main character kieran who is a punjabi sikh woman and she is sexually assaulted 
um, by her fiance's brother in India, in her home um, in India, and she must flee India to go to Canada and to live undocumented because she wants to keep her baby despite her family's and her like her family's reputation and their thoughts on what she should do and a lot of victim blaming and people don't believe her. Honestly, this book was super hard to read. I think what helps a lot with it though is that this book weaves in between prose, poetry, and illustrations. So a lot of the time, the really hard parts of the hardest parts of this book to read was in poetry and it kind of just weaved in between prose and poetry i thought it's actually pretty consistent a lot of the books that i read that do that they just i it's not you can't really tell like if there's like a f if there's a certain form they're sticking to or if they just decide sometimes they want to write poetry but i think this book specifically was very consistent um I love the topics that we're discussing here. There's a bunch of trigger warnings, so I'm going to put a bunch of content warnings on the screen. Um, but this book is just amazing. Without spoilers or anything, I think the story itself is just so, like, it's just so amazing how she was able to weave it in with this type of, like, form with such sensitivity and such beautiful writing. First of all, the poetry. I don't read much poetry these days, but I just, I just have to get up, give it up to her. There's this one line that I really love. There's honestly so many lines in this book that I really love but I think this quote just is so beautiful it's near the end of the book and it's in the prose um piece called breaking free and it is I live in a world with powerful men that can can I live in a world where powerful men can have the truth of their actions shine bright in their faces only to smile only to live comfortably in their bodies as if they cannot remember the violence only to teach the masses how to forget just so many great symbols in this book great phrases great lines um i also kind of like how she used she put in a, like a disclaimer especially because this uh book uh switches perspective between kieran and then her daughter sahara so uh, sahara when she's speaking she puts in a disclaimer that even though she is speaking and she is voicing the story of many women that they come across like the story of women who were sexually assaulted um that whole like th there's a whole conversation about voice and um agency and all of that especially for women who were the victim um I just think this is such a beautiful book i honestly just i did cry while reading it it's such a long book too it's like f over 400 pages but it just it's just so hard to read at points and it is i i'm i'm sorry like the lines are just beautiful it is so good i don't know why this book is like not being talked about more I, there's only like so there's like actually really little ratings and i'm so sad because this book is absolutely beautiful the daughter in this book is an artist and she speaks the way she speaks about art through writing is just is the most beautiful thing ever um but anyway so this book i loved it so much you should definitely pick it up and i read this for asian readathon it is for a book that takes place outside of the u.s because this takes place in canada and i think we go to india as well so yeah this book is amazing um so anyway the next book that i will be reading i don't have with me um i think it's in the room and i'm too tired to get it but the next book i'm going to be reading is tokyo ever after by emiko jean which follows a japanese main japanese american main character that she finds out she's the crown princess of japan in her high school in in high school so i'm going to be reading that next and i'll keep you updated i'm actually going to be doing a live instagram live show with emiko jean on may 21st so i'll leave all the details down below make sure to follow me on instagram um but anyway i'm excited to jump into that book and i will be writing on some interview questions as well so i'll keep you updated hello everyone good morning it is 48 hours after i got the covid vaccine and last night was pretty hard i did have a few headaches and i was feeling really nauseous but i took a tylenol went to bed early it is the next day and i'm going to be reading today i actually have a pretty long to-do list today i'm just reading off my to-do list but i have to finish my final i wish i could say that that was a joke because i feel like in all my videos you there is somehow a clip of me like procrastinating on my homework but yeah Yes, again it is finals week and it was actually like past finals week I feel like a lot of my classmates are like have finished with their finals and I'm still here being like mm, extensions um so I gotta finish my final report and my final exam this guy gave us two things during a pandemic so I have to finish those that were due like 
a week ago. Um, so I'm gonna finish those today or try to finish those. I'm gonna prepare for an IG live tonight that I have with Suzanne Park, the author of Sunny Song Will Never Be Famous. I'm speaking with her on IG live about her book. Um, it's just a series I'm doing this month with a few Asian authors to talk about their new releases, like about their upcoming releases because I've arced for them, so if you'd like to tune in at all, not to this one because this video will be uploaded way after, but if you're interested in following my Instagram, I'll link it down below. Um, and then what else do I have to do? I'm planning on exercising today and then I'm also planning on reading Tokyo Over After today because that was the book next on my TBR. Um, but right now I'm just getting ready. I don't know why I'm getting ready actually. I woke up super early, like earlier than it's like noon right now, but I actually woke up at like 9 a.m. Um, I don't know what I was doing at 9 a.m. What was I doing at 9 a.m.? I don't really know. I think just watching YouTube videos. Um, but now I'm getting ready because I'm going to take an Instagram photo and I like to just, you know, look a little cute, look alive for them Instagram photos. So I'm doing my makeup. I just have like a mirror, like a Target mirror propped up and I'm just going to do my makeup, my eye makeup and take some photos and I'll show you how the photo shoot goes and then after I think I'm gonna read a little bit before I jump back into finals because I really don't I really don't want to do I finished one of my classes I'm only taking two classes this semester um like it's split into the modules we're doing the quarter system so I'm taking two classes at a time um and I actually already finished all my work for one class for photography too like I printed my shit did everything but for stats I mean that's a different story I just like don't want to do the work and I know that like we have deadlines and stuff but I just I just I just don't want to I just don't want to do it so I'm gonna try to get some work done today but that's pretty much it I'm just gonna finish getting ready and then uh, yeah we're gonna start reading cuz I have not read anything today so I'll catch you up later Okay, surprise, surprise, I'm procrastinating again, but I thought it'd be really interesting to share with you guys. I took an Enneagram test because I actually have never taken the Enneagram personality test. I went through Instagram and I was like on my friend's bio. That's what I like to do when I procrastinate. I go on Instagram. So I was on my friend's bio and she had her Enneagram type and I was just so curious because I'm like, I've never done, I've done the like INFP or whatever J test. Um, but I've never done an Enneagram test, so I did a personality test now. I promise I'll get back to work after this, but I just wanted to share my results. So if you didn't know, the Enneagram is a person personality system that aims to reveal how emotions drive our lives and how we engage with others in an effort to get what we want and need. So it defines nine personality types, each with its own set of strengths and weaknesses and opportunities for personal growth. I'm not a super big person when it comes to like personality tests and all that but I do think there it is interesting and I, I think it's validating of course to read about like your strengths maybe not so much your weaknesses but it's also nice to know like some things that motivate you so I took the test and um my primary type is type three um this one you have to like pay for so if there's a better link let me know in the, in the comments if there's another test that I can take, but this one just has like the basic of what I am. I'm a 98% match for type 3, which is also known as the achiever. I've read about that one before. I honestly think I fit the bill. Um, threes want to be successful and admired by other people and are very conscious of their public image. I totally agree with that. I am very much a planner. I believe that like, like I, I'm the type of person who knows what I want to do and what I want to be in the next month in the next year in the next 10 years I'm that kind of person and I do believe that my success is like based off of that is motivated by that planning and just having an idea of where to go because I feel like if I don't have an idea of where I'm gonna go and if I am not planned I'm not gonna be motiva motivated enough to achieve that and that's just how I work um I also think I am very conscious of my public image that's something that's that I've discussed before um just in you know Instagram because I do run like an Instagram account um, so yeah that's super interesting I'm excited to read more about this although you have to like pay for it so I just thought it was really interesting and I want to share and I'm gonna get back to work now but yeah 
Wait, holy fucking shit. Okay, this is the egg made with the pesto oil. It literally looks so good. And then I just have it with a Canadian bacon slice because I like a little bit of meat. And then on an egg McMuffin and it looks literally so good. I already tried some of it. Oh my god, it looks so good. This is definitely a total win. I will leave the description to the TikTok if you want to learn how to make it, but yeah. Hello everyone, so it is about 10 p.m. and I have just finished a little bit of reading for Tokyo Over After. I am about 70 pages in, but I think I'm going to stop for today. I'm getting a little bit of a headache, um, but I just love it so far. I really feel like this is kind of what I needed after reading If I Tell You the Truth, which is a very different book. Um, and it was obviously very hard to read, but this one is just very lighthearted and kind of reminds me of The Princess Diaries, which is one of my favorite movies, and What a Girl Wants with Amanda Bynes, which is also my favorite movie of all time. Um, but just because I love the fish out of water premise where um, a girl finds out that like her father is like or she comes from like a royal background or like something like that. But anyway, I just love the authorial like the the tone um and the narrator so our narrator is um princess or izumi tanaka and she finds out that she is the crown princess of of japan and i just really love her tone she's a very like bites back kind of girl it's very sarcastic and witty like always very snappy and i just love it so much um i can already tell there might be an enemies to lovers romance which i honestly wasn't expecting um but anyway i'm really loving it i'm super excited to keep reading and find out what happens um i really don't know what happens i really hope it'll go to like the what a girl wants route because i really like the plot of and the premise of that um, movie so anyway i'm really liking the main character so far and the story and i'm excited to see how it turns out and i'll read more tomorrow sorry I really haven't been vlogging most of today. I woke up really early this morning and I basically was just doing my finals for the entire morning and for the rest of the day because I really couldn't procrastinate anymore since my final is due Monday. One of my final exams is due Monday so I needed to finish it since it's Sunday currently but i did some reading it's nighttime now and i did some reading before bed so i'm about i'm more than halfway through tokyo ever after by emiko jean i just this is definitely like just the type of read that i've needed it's just so much of a comfort read that i'm like really enjoying it and i feel like because i'm reading it in the mood that i need it to be like i'm enjoying it more like i feel like if i was craving something more fast-paced and like fantasy i feel like i wouldn't be enjoying it as much but i'm really loving it um it's giving me so many it's definitely giving me those crazy rich asian vibes like extravagant wealth all that um i also think it reminds me of bridgerton a little bit because there's this like tabloid that is um interspersed with like the narrative parts where like the tabloid is like oh this is happening and it's really really cool and i and i just love that like perspective and then it also reminds me of what a girl wants with amanda Bynes, which i'm really craving so i'm probably gonna watch that after this because just before i sleep um yeah i just love i love how like i love like i said i love like the fish out of water element where we're kind of entering this space with the main character but I really like the opportunity that Emiko Jean took to you know we're learning along with the main character so we're learning along with um what's her name again I keep re uh, Izumi I keep thinking I keep referring to her as Zoom Zoom because they, they that's her nickname in nickname in the book her nickname is Zoom Zoom um 
so yeah i just i just love a lot of things i love how she took this opportunity to do this sort of like teaching in terms of like not only are we learning about like the culture of japan through is through izumi's eyes because she is learning about like japan because she's never been to japan she's never learned the language the japanese language so we're kind of learning that as well there's a lot of cultural things but there's also a lot of like etiquette things for royalty so royalty etiquette she's learning like which spoons to use for when she's eating um and things that you're not supposed to do as japanese royalty and i just love that i love the mix of learning about culture and learning about etiquette as well i just it is beautiful um it's so cool because they she, the author actually uses Japanese in the book there's translations but she uses Japanese in like casual conversation and it just I'm able to read it because I took Japanese actually for four years so I, I really was hoping for that in this book for there to kind of be some Japanese language interspersed and for me to read it and just like know what they're saying because my years of Japanese language have paid off um there are just so many like references like they're in Tokyo right now and I've been to to Tokyo. I went to Tokyo actually in my senior year of high school which she is in Tokyo in her senior year of high school. So many parallels, so many little things in this book that just make me smile and make me so happy. Um, there is an enemies to lovers romance. I knew it. Well I knew it from the beginning because we don't really, I don't really, I didn't really read the synopsis of this book. I kind of just knew the premise of it um but yeah overall i'm loving it so much i'm hoping on finishing it tomorrow and then hopefully we can finish out the vlog with my with my wrap-up of this book but anyway i'm just loving this book so much like it's such a fun time it comes out this month too so if you have a chance definitely pick it up if you're looking for just a comfort read with a sarcastic and witty main character that's just so funny and what a great romance and also to pick up a few things about Japanese culture and etiquette I definitely recommend picking up this book but anyway I'm gonna watch what a girl wants before I sleep and then I will wake up tomorrow morning and read more <laughs> don't have school and it feels so good so change of plans I actually don't have any coffee anymore I drink coffee every morning I don't have any more Keurig cups and I know Keurig cups are super bad for the environment but I literally cannot afford to get like a French press or like something that you know just requires the like the it's too early in the morning to think about that but anyway, I'm going to probably go out and grab a latte from my school's cafe because they use compostable cups. And then I'll make a plan later today to order some Keurig cups, but like those compostable ones. They're a little more expensive. They're from this company called Taste. Um, they're a little more expensive, but I was looking into them because I was ready to, to make the switch. Um, so I'll look into those. Oh, it's just so annoying. I'm just like ready for an easy day and then that's not what I wanted um so yeah that's the plan today I plan to I live the plan was literally to wake up early read finish Tokyo over after close out the vlog finish my final and then enjoy the Monday but that's not how it's gonna go so I'm gonna go to the school I'm gonna get a latte because I need my coffee and then I'm gonna send that package out that I need to ship <laughs> And then I'm going to come back, work on my final. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to work on my final and then I'm going to finish Tokyo Ever After because I think I can finish that today. That's pretty much the day schedule. It's so sad. I'm so sad I don't have coffee. Uh, I feel like I haven't had coffee these past few days because of the vaccine. I didn't want to like add anything into the mixture so I've just been taking a break from coffee by break I mean like two days um but I drink coffee every single morning I usually just get like a medium roast Keurig situation then I have a creamer but I will be looking into more sustainable alternatives um I'm looking to get rid of my Keurig anyway so 
yeah, we'll see about that. That's the schedule for today. That is, that's the schedule for today, and we'll see if any of that actually gets done. I might end up reading when I come back from the cafe because I'm, like, not in a good mindset to do work right now. I'm just, like, so tired, and I need to be woken up. Um, and I started my finals yesterday, like, midday, so, like, the final exam. So, that's the schedule for today. So this is the outfit I put together. It is just these pants that are so comfortable, a crop top, a jacket, a bag. That's it. This says, gonna go grab a latte and make a return. That's all I need. closed out my last semester of junior year and I'm officially finished with everything for the school year so next year I will be a senior in college and I'm just it's so surreal but it hasn't hit me that I actually just finished it because this year was kind of crazy our school adopted like this new format like quarterly system which is not really good for me since I'm really bad with time management so I had to like be done with everything in seven weeks and that was just not it for me but I'm glad that's over so anyway right after I finished my finals I jumped straight back into Tokyo right after by Emiko Jean and I ended up finishing it and let me just tell you right now this book comes out on May 18th this month I definitely would recommend pre-ordering it helping the author out and ordering this book because this was just such a freaking delight like I this is I would definitely reread this. I first of all I gave it five five stars, but what I thought I, I like going into it I thought it was just gonna be a really entertaining story, but it actually does such a deep dive into um this character's relationship with her identity and being a Japanese American. So it talks a lot about like the Asian American identity and that kind of the confusion between that because she definitely felt like she wasn't American or Japanese enough. I love when that's talked about in books, especially YA. And I loved how it was weaved into the story of her also having to grapple with her coming to terms with her identity as royalty. So she's really battling to like, you know, battles right here. She's she's dealing with this identity of being royalty and having to inherit this title and then she's also dealing with being in Japan but not feeling Japanese enough. Um, I really loved it. It jumped between, we're jumping between different places. We're, we're in the US for some of the book, then we're in Japan but we're in Tokyo and Kyoto and just jumping between different places and I love this book. It was super fast paced for a YA contemporary. I would die for Akio, who is the love interest, it's an enemies to lovers love interest, and I would just die for him because he, he is amazing and I love this book so much. I would highly recommend reading it if you're just looking for a comfort read but something to teach you a little bit more about how the Asian American identity can feel confusing at times and very frustrating, especially when you don't know your, your like background or your parents. Um, so yeah, I would highly give this a read. Um, so that is probably the end of this vlog. I'm just going to close it out on me finishing this book. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey between a really, really messy weekend with just dealing with the vaccine, finals, and trying to read as many books as I can for Asian Readathon. Once again, I'll leave all the details for Asian Readathon in the description in in the description box and with all the books that I'm reading for that. But yeah, thanks for joining me on this adventure. I will be back with another video soon and I hope you got some good recs from this video. So I'll see you soon. Bye.